Hello everybody and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are back to check out Local Legend 15 that just released today for $14.99. The Donaire DO-31, a German VTOL aircraft. And it seems like it's going to be pretty, uh... <laughs> Hopefully I have it set up right. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the full, uh, startup process. Which hopefully doesn't go completely wrong. We'll probably hit the hint a lot and hope for the best. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a nice little stroll around the aircraft. I do want to start opening up the doors and stuff too. Uh, I haven't really done that with previous aircraft just yet. Um, but it's really cool. Like I love the fact that they go to these more obscure aircraft, experimental ones, and let you experience it in the simulator rather than all the, you know, ones you know of. So it, it's really cool to see the... The variation, oh my goodness, what was that? <laughs> See the very, there's a lot of, what is, I feel like we got like weeping angels here. Every time we look away, there's like another one that spawns. <laughs> but anyways, it's really cool to see some really unique aircraft come in the local legend series. Cargo area here. Unfall einschlagen. Yes. Make our way up to the cockpit here. Hopefully we don't have to touch any of these buttons back here, but I'm sure we do. <laughs> if it all goes wrong, it'll just cut to it being on anyways, but that's all right. And there we go. There's the cockpit. I'm really excited about this. There's also something else you have to do regarding uh, throttle access three to do the VTOL stuff. So I think I have it set up right. We'll, we'll figure it out once we get there. So let's dive into the cockpit here and get this absolute ginormous checklist to even get started uh, going here. So battery needs to be off for some reason. Seems like you'd want that on, but that's okay. <laughs> I guess it's just to see what's going on. In, so that's all going to be off and idle. You don't have to do anything there. All right, battery... Beacon. Is that... Uh, oh no, that's just... Oh my. Can I help you? My goodness, these... Planes are just... <laughs> they're everywhere. Alright, so beacon's on. Engine starter cover. Start in... Oh my goodness. Okay. Master on. Ignition on. Starter on. Engine one above eighteen percent. Oh my. <laughs> we have a lot to go, everybody. And that's above eighteen percent. Engine one master on. Exhaust gas something in range. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and guess that this is in range. It's in the green, so fantastic. Engine starter. Was this on? I'll leave that. I'll wait a couple more seconds here. Oh, we'll just shut it off, see what happens. I think we're good. Engine parameters, monitor. I'm sure it's fine. We'll just, we'll get to the second. <laughs> let's, just, let's just get to the second. All right, master, ignition, starter. Get that to 18%. Because this goes into VTOL, right? Yes, it does. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So we need to get to 18% on that, which we are over. Turn this thing on. So I'm wondering how they did engine sounds for this, because obviously I don't think there's one that turns on anymore. I'd be surprised, but I mean, hey, if there is, cool. Uh, sh exhaust gas in range, it's in green. Engine starter, turn that off. And engine parameters, monitor, that's fantastic. 
nothing's going wrong there. And close up the engine cover. Step one, complete. Generators one, two, three, and four on. On, 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 and on. Engine starter cover. We open it again. <laughs> These are off already. Okay, we close that again. Fantastic. Fuel pump switches on. Oh my goodness gracious. Like whack-a-mole. Definitely enough fuel pumps in here. Ten of them. Yikes. And then beacon check on. We did turn that on. Vertical engine startup procedure. Both conventional. Running. Yes. Co-pilot vertical engine. On. Co-pilot green indicator. Is on green. Vertical engines. Are they spooling? They must be, because they're doing something. What is going on out here? Oh, look at that. This is open. Nice. Okay. Um, so we got the spoolage. Left, right, vertical, open. What does that mean? Wait, what? Hopefully that was... Oh, wait. Something's flying. Um... Vertical engine spooling. Are you spooling? You are. Alright. The spooling is happening. Temperatures monitor. I'm sure that's fine. Conventional engine idle. Idle. Co-pilot assist mode as required. Um... Hover assist... Stove all assist. Boundary mode. Yeah, that's fine. What could go wrong? Taxi out procedure. Taxi clearance obtained. We are obtained. Thank you. I don't need any... I don't need permission. I'm in a donier. <laughs> um, parking brakes off. Alright, we can get out of this for now. We'll get to the runway. Oh wow, this really comes to a stop here. This is in collaborations with any builds. There is a fighter jet somewhere up in the sky. That thing is loud. Uh, let's go to... 17 right. I wish that fighter jet would get out of the airspace, because I'm hearing that more than the aircraft here. Uh oh, hang on. We're slowing down too much. Look at all... <laughs> all those god dang airliners back there. I don't know what was going on. This thing looks really cool. I'm excited to fly this thing. I'm sure it'll go very well. And we are on the... Lineup checklist. Formation lights. Yeah, we need to get that on too. Transponder. Sure, I don't really care. Landing lights. Oh, no. Hang on. Hold up. God. Just. <laughs> that was the biggest difficulty yet. We are not going to do a conventional takeoff, because oh, why would we do that? Stovall will take off. Or Stovall. Because I don't think we have to do all oh, flaps. Well, I don't have to worry about flaps with a goddamn vertical takeoff. We'll just, we'll do this procedure here. I'm sure there's nothing important on the conventional one we need. That stupid fighter jet is still around here. Go away. My goodness. Can we not? <laughs> God dang it, man. Every time I'm outside the cockpit, I hear that thing rumbling through the sky.
Alright, so both conventional engines are running. Vertical engines are running, of course. As we've come to know. Because I gotta see, because I have it set on a... So I think something's happening with the engines, because I have... Cause let me see if this actually slows down now. It does. Okay, so those buttons I have set for Access 3 are active. I still hear this goddamn fighter jet. Unbelievable. Alright, so... That is on. On in green. I don't think I need the assist. We'll see. Parking brake is whatever. Conventional engine increase when you get to 50 knots with that. Uh, okay. I think we're set. Let's get rid of this. Oh, yeah. We're already... We're already Oh my god, look at that. The gear's are already going up. Look at that! I guess it's not completely VTOL, it's just a vertical takeoff assist. Hence the reason why it says what... You know what? Never mind. Look at that! How cool! Alright, we'll decrease our vertical thrust here. Closes the end caps and... Oh god, wait. No, no, no. Stop. I'm gonna be honest, co-pilot. I don't think I need you. Are you gonna just fight me again? No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> need to get out of here. I'm heading to the other side of the mountains. The stupid fighter jet's getting on my nerves. But we are in the air. Oh, I didn't open. I'll open the doors at the end. I keep forgetting about that. But I think it's kind of fun going through the checklist on these new aircraft. Just you know, kind of experience going through it. Because normally I don't do that. I just kind of hit the auto startup stuff. But it's kind of nice figuring out the systems and so forth rather than just skipping all that. Alright. Fantastic. Let's get some nice little showcase shots here. I need to trim this thing out, but what I normally have is... Where's the trim at? Oh, look at that. We even got a little screen here. Nice. Not following us, though. There we go. Oh, we got a windshield wiper? Oh! Nice. <laughs> Alright. Um, off. There we go. Oh, here. We'll just slow down a little bit. And now I'll... Quit talking. Oh, we're gonna be kind of. What? We'll just enjoy the plane from outside. God dang it. All right, before we crash into the mountains here. It's a very quiet plane. Like, I'm I'm really wondering what it sounded like normally, because I'd be surprised if it was this quiet. But, I mean, I know nothing about the airplane, so... <laughs> it's quite possible. All right, we'll kind of keep this little bank here. We'll do some more just letting you enjoy the audio again.
All right. There we go. I mean, don't have to spend too much time listening to the audio here, because, again, I'm not sure how they got it. Um, I'm sure it's kind of based off some other aircraft or something like that. Because, again, I'm pretty sure there's nothing that's flyable or even something that can be turned on <laughs> anymore. But either way, so... F oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to hit this. But either way, really enjoying flying this thing. I mean, I was expecting it to be a bit more complicated, not too bad. Just have to set up the third access. It comes up with a little thing. By the way, if you're interested in seeing that, uh, all I did was type in uh, throttle. And then I added throttle 3 increase decrease to a couple buttons. And then that's what's controlling the vertical engines on the aircraft. So, pretty simple. I was a bit worried when I saw that. I was like, oh god, how complicated is that gonna be? And it wasn't at all. Alright, so I think what we're gonna go ahead and do is... Well, once we get on the ground, I'll try to figure out how to open the doors. Because I definitely want to see that. Love the cockpit, too, with the little dome going on, pretty much. I think a certain livery has the extra nose cone thing attached to it, because I notice this one doesn't have that. But I know there's a variant of it with that nose cone. So, while we're descending, let's go ahead and take a little peek at our Stovall landing. Or vertical landing procedure. Okay, the conventional engines are running. That is a check. <laughs> Before five mile final, co-pilot vertical... Is that this thing again? Oh no, it's not. I don't want... I don't want... Assists, though. Leave me alone. Speed, check. Landing gear down at five mile marker. Controlled by co-pilot. I don't need co-pilot. I know, I, we need to do this on our own. We are professionals out here. By the way, are we crashing? No, we're still, we're, we're fine. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what we're needing to... So this thing can land vertically then? Seems kind of surprising, because it doesn't seem like it's providing that much thrust on the... Vertical engines there. But, I mean, to be fair, the co-pilot stuff is probably there because the co-pilot was needed to do it. Because it was probably such a convoluted, complex system that it was going to be pretty much impossible for the pilot to do everything at once. So it does make sense. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. I was just trying to be a hero here. Five miles, which... Go ahead and... Idle this thing here, because we're still a little bit high up here. Man, I just love how unique aircraft looked like not even that long ago. Nowadays, we get stuff that just all looks the same. Just like with cars. That's why it's always exciting when they add these older aircraft, experimental ones, just things that are just different looking. Like, it's just... I love that. And by the way, if you have the Ultimate Edition, or I always forget what the different edition... The higher editions of Flight Sim, this is $9.99. So you get a little bit of a discount as usual to anything that's a local legend or so forth, DLC-wise. But if you don't have it, like I said earlier, $14.99. Air Force Academy, by the way. Just in case you haven't seen one of my videos before, I always fly around Colorado Springs. It's always my testing ground for <laughs> any of these aircraft. Oh, it's not looking at what I want to look at. 
so I'd say we're close to five miles out. We'll get the checklist back out here. Speed, check. I don't know what we're trying to go for here. Oh, landing, 153 knots. Okay, so yeah, we can we can idle a little bit, go a bit slower. We still have to descend just a little bit. Uh, landing gear, I doubt we'll be able to put it down, but I'll be on the outside just in up. Oh, can. Love all the bits that retract and stuff. Awesome. Uh, right, get back in the cockpit here. Uh, flaps controlled by co-pilot. I'm assuming I don't have to do anything since I have that on. Co-pilot vertical is on. Oh no, it's not. On. Descent rate, managed to three miles. Done with the five mile marker. Go to three, airspeed. We're gonna try to go to 153. Funny, we're already getting the vertical lift here. That's why it's open, of course, on the ends of the wing. Invention, so we'll go idle on the engine, vertical lift co-pilot used to maintain descent. Oh, okay, so that's the vertical lift command, got it. But co-pilot should be taking care of that, I think. I may have started this just a little early, but that's okay. Back stick. Rudder. Stick roll. Okay. Looking at that, hang on. <laughs> so basically all we're gonna do is once we get to... I mean, honestly, we should probably be idle already. And we'll see how much our co-pilot's helping us out. Because I'm not seeing this move much, so... Good on the checklist. It's all on us now. Hear that fighter again. He's still hanging around over here. <laughs> oh! Oh no! My buttons reset again. That's not good. Now it's back to rudder. That's not ideal. But I'm assuming he's adjusting. Oh, he is. Look at that. Oh, wait. No, he's not. I don't see him. <laughs> That's okay. Coming in for a landing here. We'll be on the outside just so you can enjoy it. I can't do any- oh my- I couldn't do anything else. I- I was as high up as I- oh, that was a terrible landing. Unbelievable. Well, it didn't help that my controls switched to rudders for some unknown reason. That's annoying. Here, hang on. I know what we're gonna do. Because I'd like to do a vertical, you know, the- the assisted landing with it, but for whatever reason, everything I changed the button to, it sticks to rudder, unfortunately, so. A bit annoying, so we'll just have to go for the usual landing. I mean, you got the idea of it. It just sucks that the co-pilot really wasn't doing anything with the <laughs> the throttle there. Unfortunately. 
But yeah, it's just some random person that's not even playing. They're like froze or paused over there in an F5. So that's why we've been hearing that the entirety of us being here. I guess I should pay attention. Oh yeah, we're way under our speed that we're trying to go to here. High as well. Oh, oh, come on. Yeah, I know. Calm down. Oh, come on. Oh, oh my good wow <laughs> okay <laughs> was a little aggressive on the the flight models a little weird landing I will give it that it's very just like immediate reactions rather than something that's gradual but yeah the, the landing seems a little I don't know a little off but everything else I'm really enjoying about it. I mean, again, I love just getting any of these planes that are unique anyways, so... I'm happy with my purchase. So we're gonna just go ahead and park this thing up really quick. This thing shut down, and then uh, open some doors. If I can figure out how to do that. So, first of all, we are gonna go ahead and... Hopefully get a camera back. Oh, there it was. No, continue. Leave me alone. So, finally discovered it after... I don't know how long that was, but... You can toggle the nose cone and the cargo from the tablet we were looking at earlier in the cockpit to the left so right to the left of the seat you hit the settings bar there and then you can do the nose probe my apologies not nose cone the the probe and the ramp door from that so <laughs> goodness gracious i don't know why that took me so long to find that uh, but a really cool plane still uh, landings are a little weird just because of the Planes kind of, I guess you could say arcadey. It's not very realistic, obviously, as you saw. It just kind of hits the ground and it's on there. Uh, but still a fun flight, I think. Again, like I said, it's nice having something that's unique and something that not a lot of people really can see in real world. In the real world, because I know there's one in a museum in Germany, but I think that's the only one. Um, so to be able to experience stuff like this is awesome, so love the local legend series, and I think it's worth picking up. And again, uh, or nine ninety nine if you have the higher editions of Flight Sim, and if you have the standard one, it is fourteen ninety nine. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our first flight with the Donner DO31.